Hello everyone and welcome to the video on how to set up your do and organize your Doom Brun box. Uh, I'm basically going to be walking everyone through this organize the box sheet that comes with the game. Uh, I've already done taken the liberty of taking everything out of the box so you'll see my Doom Brun box is empty with only the bottom insert in it. I have the top insert over here. And basically this video is going to be walking you through and showing you how we recommend you organize the box uh, based on the suggestions here that we put in this sheet. So with that, the sheet tells you to of course remove everything in the box, which I've already done. The next step is to take the original set of watch, which I have here. It's a pretty new copy, so it's like you're opening a new one almost. And you're going to need these dividing cards. That's sort of a crucial part of all of this. Uh, so we'll set those to the side. And the first step is to take your cards here from Set of Watch. You have a final location. Take all the other locations, separating out the respites, which have that camp symbol on them. And you're going to want to organize these cards and basically get the correct dividers for them. So next up, we have the unhollowed. It's, no, it's nice to keep the unhollowed separate. I like to keep the summon cards separate. And then all the rest of these cards should be the creature cards from Set of Watch. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the creature cards first. That's just the divider I have. Take the divider put everything behind it and then place it in the box. And then similarly, you'll see that the next divider we have is the locations for set of watch. So just take all your set locations, put those in the box. And then I'm gonna skip past. There should be, there's a respite location and a final locations divider. And what I'm gonna do for these, since they're not quite full, is I'm gonna create a little pile as we go through this. Cause there's all our respites and final locations. We only have one so far, but we'll accumulate some more as we go. And then I forget, do we put on hollowed? Okay, yeah, we don't. And these on hollowed can also go in that creature deck as well. So you don't even need to set those, up, set those apart. But what I like to do is if you're going to put them together, I like to reverse their backs. So they're still sort of separate behind the divider, just in case you needed to grab those particular cards. Next, you'll want to take the ability cards and separate them. There's five each for each adventurer. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here. I've got the wizard, the warrior, Here's the Beastmaster. They each have five ability cards. Rogue and Cleric. And you're going to want to go to your Doomed Run stuff and grab your uh, Warden cards, which are these square dividers. And you're going to take the top six. One for each card, for each character, I should say. And what you're going to want to do is take your top tray and start organizing these front to back so we put the warrior in there first, put the warrior's ability cards behind them. We got the rogue next, grab the rogue cards, put those behind. Ranger, you get the idea. But this top tray is what you will take out when you're ready to play the game. And you'll be able to pick your character from there. So again, you can see that we've started filling this up, but obviously we've got all the characters from all the different games to go. As I just spill all the cards over, so I get for lifting it up. But luckily I can easily grab them and put them in together. I'm actually gonna use, 
If you've got the metal coins, they can be used as a good stopper for coins. So now that we've finished the original set of watch box, uh, these components, you know, these dice and components, you can set off to the side, you can organize in a different box. Um, you have the character boards down here below. I personally, I, I would take these out just for character selection. I'd take the character boards out. And we'll set those off to the side because these are going to be your characters that you can start with in a new run of camp campaign run. But the dice and everything else, uh, and components and bags, if you're opening the game new or if you have your game, you can actually leave those inside with the rule book. Um, and what I would do is I would place this box then in its specified spot, you know, in the, in the organizational tray. Because uh, eventually all three of those will be in there. So after you do set a watch one, you're obviously going to want to move to Swords of the Coin and go through a similar process here. Opening the box, the rule book, will be good. we'll go back into the box. You're going to take your ability cards and all the deck cards out. You can actually leave all the boards. I'll set these off to the side. We may want to punch them. But you can leave all these components and the boards in the box as instructed by the organizational sheet. Uh, these special cards, like the crow, I'm going to set off to the side for now. We'll come back to those. Again, I like to keep all the summon cards together. You'll see why that's helpful later. But then you're going to go through and take all of the creatures from Swords of the Coin. Take that Swords of the Coin divider, and this goes into the box. Then next, We've got Swords of the Coin locations. Again, you are going to want to go through and find any respites. You can see I've got some respites here with the tent on them. And I'm going to put those in my respite pile here that I have down here. And then final locations. And just make sure you get all the right locations in each spot. Here's another respite. Here's another respite. Respite. There's another final location. So here's all my Swords of the Coin locations now. I can put those back here. And then just like we did with the ability cards, you're going to want to go through the ability cards and you're going to take you know, we've got the bounty hunter here, take the bounty hunter's warden card and put that all in the small tray. So we've got the bounty hunter, you know, here's the witch. Find the witch divider. Barbarians next. Heretic. And then we have the monk. Sorry, I've got some of these dividers off screen because I'm trying my best not to do any spoilers. I think, I think I'll be successful. Artificer. Now, what we have left as far as cards go are all the items from the game. And you'll notice we, there is an items divider and the item section of the top tray is actually this, I guess it can fit in either. Probably if you sleeve it, you probably wanna go here. If you don't sleeve it, you wanna go there. The middle there, you'll wanna put the items behind their divider. And from here, uh, you can keep these player boards in the box, just so you know where they are. Put the rule book back on top. 
uh, if you do, uh, you should take the time to punch the artificer's dial and probably put it behind them in here if it fits. If not, there is a location to put it in the box along with the crow. But you'll want to punch this stuff out. You may need it, or, or you can use the metal coins, of course. But um, you can punch this out and keep it in the box, but make sure the divider is readily available for when you select characters. But for now, we don't need to do that. Um, now Swords of the Coin is done. You can put that in your box. And we'll move on to Forsaken Isles, uh, which is the last step, last box we have to do. Oh, well, it's not entirely true. You do need to do Outriders. You are going to need Outriders. Now this one's really easy to separate because it's just creatures. Um, you could leave it in this box. If you like the box, you could put this right in there. But we do have a divider for it if you want to take it out. For speed sakes of setup, I'm just going to leave all these creature cards, 40 creature cards here, in the box and just put Outriders behind the divider for now, for the sake of the video. But uh, if you want to take those out to have them all uh, available in the box and sortable, that is understandable, of course. And then last but not least, you're going to move on to Forsaken Isles. Now, we suggest in our organizing the box sheet that your Forsaken Isles box is the box that you use with all the components you need to play. And that's the box you're going to take out. And the reason we recommend that is just because it has the Doom tokens in it. So the Doom tokens you're going to be playing with throughout the campaign are in Forsaken Isles already, which means all this stuff on the bottom, we can basically leave that in there and we're going to be dividing through these cards. But you can leave all those components in there. And we're repeating that process again. So we're going for our creatures. We're going for our locations. We're going to make sure we have those dividers. And you're just sorting through the, the deck. These should all be creatures already. Now, I do like to take out the summon cards. So we're going to put those down there. Um, the Kraken's in here, that's fine. These are all Forsaken Isles creatures. Going over here, we have more Unhallowed. Again, they all go behind that creatures divider. Now, here's something to note. Get all the Unhallowed out of here. The Jaguar, Stag, Owl, Badger, Beaver, Chipmunk, and Black Powder cards, and the Mounted card, these are all special character cards. This is the Druid's deck of creatures they can put in. The Black Powder is used with the Corsair. And the Mounted card, which is double-sided, is used with the um, Cavalier. So you're going to want to take all of those cards and set them off to the side. I'm going to put them with the Crow Familiar right now. Then we have some final locations. Beast Lair, Acolyte Spire, House of the Unhallowed. We've got some Respites here that we're going to take out. And I think the rest of this deck should all be regular locations. Oops, dropped one. So you're going to take all the normal locations, just making sure there's no more with symbols on them. Yep, these are all good. You're going to take all these locations. They go behind that locations divider for Forsaken Isles. Those unhallowed can go with all these other creatures and unhallowed. Again, I like to split the decks backward just so I know where the division is. And those are all going to go behind the Forsaken Isles divider of creatures. And then you're going to move on and do the same thing with the smaller cards. So you know, we've got the Corsair, Fire Sorceress, Rock Golem, here's the Druid, the Merchant, and the Cavalier, and then the item cards. Now I'm going to take all the item cards and put them with my item deck I have in there already, behind the items divider. Then I'm going to find the divider for each character. Corsair, Fire Sorceress. Again, while this sorting can be a little bit of a pain, 
it is going to make playing through Doomed Run that much sweeter, trust me, that much easier. Merchant. I'm going to put all the new characters in here as well. The Golem. Druid. And last but not least, the Cavalier. I'm just looking at a few things off camera here to make sure I get these square dividers right. I'm gonna make sure I place some of the secret people. Again, you can, you will get hints as to what the secret characters you'll unlock as you play are uh, in this game, but uh, we're doing our best not to ruin it on camera. Um, you know, depending on how you wanna treat the spoilers when you get the game, uh, there are warden cards for the secret characters that are not in the envelope, so just be aware. Um, you can try to skip over them, or I think getting a glance of what the characters are isn't necessarily a spoiler without seeing their abilities. Now we're going to move on to the components that come in Doomed Run. So uh, Forsaken Isles for now has sort of all the components as far as dice and I mean, you may need dice from the other game, but it has everything we need to play a game. Uh, so you can take that box, which is pretty empty now, and put it back in here. But there is a deck of cards that is not in envelopes that you will be given from Doomed Run. There are, if you don't have the deluxe version of Set a Watch, and you're not, you don't have the original Kickstarter, which many people do not, um, we opened a retail version of the game in this video just to show you, but some of the components you're gonna get on the top of this deck are components that you may already have that may be duplicates uh, if you are a longtime Kickstarter backer. Uh, we just didn't want people to have to track down one more thing for this campaign. It already needs four additional products to enjoy Doomed Run. We don't want people to have to also chase down a deluxe copy of the game if it wasn't in print. So we have some extra and hollowed we have uh, more, all the summon cards you may have missed, and they've all been tagged with symbols to recognize what they are. So these are the best summon cards to use for the campaign. But again, I'm gonna set these off to the side because uh, we're gonna talk about summon cards a little bit later or in a future video when we set up the run. Now, all the other creatures you have here, you're gonna see like a little elven face in the bottom corner. All of those cards are what we call the Villager deck. It is the first deck that you will play in Doomed Run, and it also has a divider. All the Doomed Run creatures will go behind here, and it shows you the three different symbols we use across the campaign. The first deck you'll encounter is this Villager deck, which has a, you know, a sort of face icon on it. And what you can do, depending on how you want to play, is you can put those behind Doomed Run for now, or, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the current creature deck divider because I'm going to set this up like I'm going to play Doomed Run. And if you look in the rule book under Realm 1, there's only a few cards that we need to add to this deck to, to, for it to be the current, the first Realm's creature deck. So I'm going to set it up and I'm just going to put it behind the creature deck for now for my divider. I'm going to put that over here near the front. And I'm going to just put this Doomed Run divider in for later because as we open these envelopes, which are gonna have more cards in them, you'll be sorting those cards behind their respective dividers. So do not panic when you're organizing the box if you don't have cards to put behind all of these dividers. You can see we've done three different boxes and outriders, and we still have a lot of dividers left. The current horde divider is for when you're playing and you wanna save between games or expeditions, and you wanna save your current horde. Your current unhallowed deck and summon cards will change as you play through Doomed Run. So again, these are all sort of save state dividers. This is your current map deck. This is your current unused location deck. Because those are all things that you're going to change as you play. Um, so those dividers are probably not going to have cards behind them when you start and finish this organization process. So please do not panic 
If that's the case, it's meant to be. But let's get back to the cards you will be organizing. You'll come across a Falcon card for the Royal. That's their special card. Again, that's gonna go with those Druid cards. That's a special card that they use when you play as them. And then from here, you're gonna see um, these locations without a symbol in the bottom are from the original Kickstarter Deluxe expansion. So again, this is just to catch stuff you may have missed. You may have duplicates. You may have already organized these and put them behind their correct dividers. These are final locations, they'll go here. These cards are going to go back in the box behind, and so are these extra unhallowed creatures. They're gonna go behind the original set of watch dividers that we did in, at the beginning of the sorting. Uh, these are all extra locations, the long road. These all go in that box. Respites can go here, but these are all extra cards that you may have doubles of. Now these game break cards are cards that you're gonna be using uh, to define your expeditions and when your short games are ended. So again, I put these with the summon cards for now. That's how you're going to build your deck. Then after those game break cards, you're going to be coming across the new cards for Doomed Run. So you'll notice they have a Doomed Run dragon symbol on them, and you have respites. All these respites will go right into this respite divider. Use all the respites right at the start. These cards, uh, these Doomed Run locations, will be used in the first location, but they will, um, you will need to add to them. That's obviously not enough locations to play through the first realm. So for now, I'm gonna put them behind the Doomed Run location divider and put that in the box. And now what we have left, the only cards we have left that are not in envelopes from Doomed Run are the starting quest cards. They all have this back with a scroll on them. And I, you're going to want to put those behind the side quest deck, but then you're going to want to have nearby to this deck the completed side quest divider and the side quests removed from the run. Because as you make selections and start playing, the, the, the side quests you choose not to do will be removed from the run, and the side quests you can complete will be placed behind here so you can keep track of your save state um, and they don't enter your game in a weird way but I suggest keeping all of those side quest cards together. That side quest deck will grow as you play through Doomed Run. Now, we have all of those other dividers I mentioned, which are about how to, they're all your current save state for a run. You can put those all nearby the side quest deck and in the box for now. And then the last divider you should be left with is the Adventurer Special Cards, divider, and that's where I would put all of these cards we set off to the side that are special cards for this particular adventure. So the Falcon, the Nature deck for the Druid, you have some Black Powder cards for the Corsair, the Mounted card for the Cavalier, and of course the Crow Familiar from the original game. Now, depending on how you want to organize this, you can put the Artificer's Dial behind this or in the top box, whatever you sort of prefer. But if for some reason it's not fitting nicely in the top, you can absolutely put it behind these special cards um, in, in this part of the box. Now again, you will still have some, uh, actually let's go right back for a second. For the time being, one of these, here we go, we have this divider, which is current unhallowed deck and summon cards. All those summon cards we placed off to the side, for now at least, I would suggest putting those behind this divider. Eventually we're gonna build the unhallowed deck, but for now I do like having all the summon cards together because when you start a new run, you're going to want to discuss and figure out uh, figure out the difficulty you're going to play the game at. So, oops, I took this one out. I shouldn't have. So I would keep all those unhallowed and summon cards together. And then we can put everything else back in here. Do I have doomed run creatures? I may have messed this up a little bit. 
but that's for me to deal with. It's nothing you guys can't handle. Oh, I know what I did. I put these here. These go here. I just did two different sides. Okay. Now, as far as your top tray goes, you should have plenty of room here. I'm actually going to move these here. There's plenty of slots for you to use in this game um, to divide it however you want in the top tray. But since we don't have all the characters here and I'm not sleeving these cards, I think it fits nicer there. Um, we do have mythic items. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do too? We forgot to do the small cards for Doomed Run. We were talking so much about the dividers. But if you open up your small deck of cards that's not an envelope from Doomed Run, what you're going to find are the Royal, the Knight, and the Bard's ability cards. Again, you may have those from the deluxe version or the upgrade kit. But you're going to want to use those dividers to put all your characters together and make sure the Bard, Knight, and Royal are in there in the box, ready to be selected when you play in the future. Now you can see that we're nice and tight. And then the last cards you're going to have in there are all the mythic items for each character. Again, there are spoilers in here. I mean, you could see which the character's name for who they belong to. So I'm not going to go through them all, but there is a mythic items divider and the mythic items are meant to go in the back uh, of this area. Then last but not least, the only dividers you should have left are a dead characters divider, a party divider, and a company divider. Your party is the current four heroes you're playing with during a run. Your company is all the selectable heroes that you have. And then of course your dead heroes are characters that are going to be dead as you play through the campaign. So you can use these to save your scheme state in this tray. You know, obviously you could take the four characters you're playing as, put them behind your company or party, take everyone that you have in your party to start and put them behind your company divider, etc. cetera. Um, so all of those, I'm just gonna put at the front here. You can use those to divide things within your tray, uh, within your tray, uh, within your top tray. We do have a couple, you can put all your final locations. Basically we're getting everything in the box, right? So we're getting all the final locations in the box, all the respites in the box. These cards, I'm gonna stand up and sort and put creatures from the original game in there. And then locations from Set of Watch are gonna go in there. And now other than the only things left we have from Doomed Run are our dice, which you can put in any of these boxes to store. Your player, your player, uh, what do you call these, player boards, and all of the secret envelopes. And you have a few dividers for the secret characters, which I have off camera and I'm not showing. And your game break cards. Uh, game break cards should probably go in that current map deck, behind that current map deck divider for staving your game state. So near your side quests, and then use locations, you have a current map deck. I would put those game break cards in there. Uh, and then the only thing you should be left with are a bunch of envelopes for each realm and pocket watch. And how you want to store these is sort of up to you. Um, I do not advise, um, I do not advise cramming them in here like this. I personally advise putting them in one of the boxes we've put in here already that are pretty empty. So I mentioned setting these off to the side because these are the starting six characters if you're starting a new run of Doomed Run. So again, if Forsaken Isles is going to be your main box for that, I would take Forsaken Isles, I would take my extra dice, I'll put these on so you can see it. I would take the extra dice from Doomed Run. I'd throw those in. Your secret characters, you could throw in here. You also have your selectable characters that you're going to start your run with. And I would keep all of that in Forsaken Isles. 
Then I would choose something like Swords of the Coin to store some of these envelopes in. So maybe you take, I took realms two through five and put them in there. And I'm gonna take set of watch one and I'm gonna store realm six, seven, the victory pile and pocket watch in that box. Just because we don't need them when we're playing through Doomed Run, again, my goal is I'll have another video about how to go back to this box and set everything up to play through Doomed Run. If you do have the metal coins, I do like putting them in my cards here to give it a little structure. I'm going to secretly take my dividers and put them in the top tray here so you can't see them, at least without some sort of eagle eye zoom. I don't know. Uh, then you're gonna take your top tray and put it in there. And you should have plenty of room to put on this player board, which is what I like to use personally when I'm playing Doomed Run and the Doomed Run rulebook on top. And if you wanna keep the Organize Your Box thing, you can put that there. If you have the cloth play mat, you can add that to the top. And then we, of course, we have our flyer for our narration for Doom Run. If you're interested in that, scan that QR code, check that out. But that is how you organize all of the set of watch content into one box into Doom Run. Um, so we have everything in there. Um, I didn't show this, but I guess I will just at the end of the video here. If I use sort of the retail versions of all these games, but if you have the slip covers for these games as well, they, they, there's plenty of room that you can slip cover all of these if that's how you prefer to store it. It's up to you. For now, for my own sake, I'm going to keep it uh, without the slip covers, but I just wanted to show you that slip covers should fit if you keep all your boxes slip covered and you've been a long time backer and have all the slip cases, they should work in there as well. But that is Doomed Run and how to organize it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope everyone's getting excited to get this game into their hands. We hope to have it to you soon. And uh, check back in a future video about how to take this from this step, which is everything sort of initially organized in our box. And our next video, I'll follow up on how to quickly sort through everything we've done to set the game up to be played. You know, if you wanted to do this ahead of having a game night and you've got some friends over, uh, I'll show you the next step, which will be a few minutes of just sorting things out to get everything ready for Realm 1, a Realm 1 playthrough, uh, and to start a new Doomed Run. So check back on our YouTube channel for more of that. As always, like and subscribe to this video, and thank you for watching.